If your gun has ever malfunctioned in front of your friends, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. Comment with a time your gun malfunctioned in front of your friends. If you guys are looking to support the channel. The biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for the first month. Is it worth it? I think you're worth it, so get in there. We, of course, have other sponsors of this particular channel. We have the Dude Bag, a gift box service for your friends who are hard to buy presents for. Go ahead and get that stuff up for them. And of course, we have Mira Safety. A big thank you to all of our sponsors. Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. Surefire Weapon Lights, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about low round count drills. So specifically, in these trying times, how do we make sure that we are still staying spicy with our rifles? So I'm gonna go through what I typically go through on a range day to warm up and or to kind of maintain some bit of proficiency. I'll be firing a mag or usually a little bit less, so typically under 30 rounds on a rifle. And then if we are running a pistol, typically under 17. So we keep it within the bounds of what is kind of feasible right now. Um, of course, these drills can be expanded to go many mags, but for now, of course, we're gonna keep it a little bit lower. So to start off with, I typically start at around the seven yard mark with paper targets right here. So you can see I have standard IPSC type targets. Um, what I'm gonna be doing to start off with is working my different positions, both high ready and low ready. And to start off with, what I typically do is I run from dry fire. And the reason for that is dry fire is something that people often don't do enough of. Um, and a lot of people do dry fire kind of weird. So I'll kind of show you what I typically do. So to start off with, of course, we're making sure that our weapon is clear, that we're not gonna fire around when we don't want to, because that is the wrong type of spice that we want right there. So I'll start from my high ready right here. And essentially what I'm gonna do is on buzzer by Sean right here, um, I will go ahead and I'll bring my gun to target and I'll fire. I'm gonna look at what my reticle is doing as I pull the trigger. So we're gonna take a look at that right now. Shooter standby. Good. So right there, brought the gun up to my shoulder. And as I pulled that trigger, watch my reticle dip a little bit. So I know that I'm doing something a little bit fucky when I'm pulling that trigger. So it's important to be able to diagnose yourself because a lot of people bring the gun up, they're good and they're like, like, ah, impact, good to go. A thousand yard shot and made it. But that might not be the reality. So you wanna make sure that you're very critical of yourself with this dry fire before we get into live fire. Ready again, Sean. All right, stand by. Mm -hmm. Good, so felt pretty good right there. I'm gonna do one more, excuse me, two more from low ready. So when you're ready. Yep. Stand by. Good, that one felt pretty good. Pretty nice and warmed up on the range right now. Okay, hit me again. Stand by. Good, so that's feeling nice and warmed up. I'm feeling pretty good. What I'll work through at this point is my reset. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my weapon nice and primed, my trigger is ready to fire. And then once I fire, I'm gonna reset the trigger and pull through that reset. You'll see it right here. Stand by. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reset my trigger. So when I let off that trigger right then, then my trigger is gonna be primed and ready to fire again. So what I'm looking for right there is as I let my finger off that trigger, is my reticle doing anything weird? And everything looked pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm gonna do one more and then I'll get into live fire. Get, hit me. Stand by. Yeah. Good, so reticle's pretty much staying in place. I'm feeling pretty good, so we're ready to go into live fire. And the reason why we're doing that dry fire is that dry fire really matters. If you aren't working that dry fire, you're really missing out on the amount of training that you can get. So besides dry firing at the range before I kind of get into everything, I also do a lot of dry fire at home. Specifically, if I die in war zone and I'm sitting there spitting in my chair, I'll get my pistol. I know my camera guy does this. He's behind there smirking. Or I'll get my rifle. Sean, I know you do that shit too. You die because we always die in war zone because admittedly we're pretty bad. Speaking of which, Grand Thumb Twitch stream coming at you soon. But in any case, when you're sitting there or you're watching TV, I like to sit there 
with a cleared weapon and I like to track those targets both on the TV or a, a light switch or something to make sure that I'm getting those reps in. So without further ado, we are now loaded up and we are ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna work those same drills now from high and low ready with live rounds. All right, Yep. shooter, stand by. Get All right. one more time. 111, stand by. Mm -hmm. Good. 101. Good. We'll go ahead and we'll go from low ready. Low ready. Yep. Stand by. All right. That one didn't read it. Yeah. Do one it's more. It's a quiet suppressor. Yeah. Do right. one more. Yeah. I'm ready. Stand by. All right. Good. It's coming 25. in at 8.5. Yeah. Good. I'm feeling pretty good with that. So those were cold shots right there. Times aren't blazing fast. And again, it's important to look at yourself critically and be like, what am I actually able to do on demand? No warm up. I know everyone gets into Instagram or YouTube and they're like, I'm about a 0.25 reaction time from uh, buzzer to shot. And that's probably not reality. So again, be critical, look at yourself and don't beat yourself up about not being lightning fast because what's important is getting good shots. So we'll take a look right here. So I fired four rounds, my first round, a little low, and that's just because I'm close with an optic. That's gonna be high of a bore. After that, corrected, and I got my shots pretty good. I can feel myself pulling right a little bit. So I know right now that I'm doing a bit of that, little bit of that right pulling of my trigger, a little bit too much trigger when I'm getting into that. Hey, these are data points, because again, we don't have a whole lot of ammo, but what have I learned from this right here? Quite a bit about my own shooting. Again, that was just four rounds. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into a little bit of follow through, specifically, um, if I fire more than one round, it's when we get into that kind of follow through type period. So again, how is my recoil control? How is my trigger control? All that type of stuff is going to matter as I get into that slightly higher round count. And again, depending on how much ammo you have, uh, you might be doing two shots or three shots. We'll work two, then I'll show three, but generally, Right now with this crazy ammo stuff, probably two shots is gonna work well for you. But it is important that you do get that follow through because without being able to train that, you might think that you're just laser focused, but then, you know, with a laser accuracy, but then when you get that second round, you start falling apart. And again, it would be better to go higher for five round strings to see what you're really looking like, like with a build drill, but ammo being what it is, it might be difficult to do that. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do two rounds from each position. All right, two rounds, high ready? Yep. Stand by. All right, you got one, three, six total time. Cool. All right, from low ready. Stand by. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, 1.25. Nice. Where was the first shot at right there? First shot. Okay, nice. So, looking over here, group is pretty good. And funny enough, I pulled one high, right? So I could feel that one. Um, I kind of overdrove my recoil a little bit and got a shot high right there. And again, a good data point. The point is, you're not gonna be you know, amazing coming out here once a month and shooting and that's okay. And again, it's good to fail because it's, it gives you a good point of data to see what you're doing wrong. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and do some three round strings and show you guys kind of what that's looking like. So if you have the ammo to do this, that is awesome. If not, don't worry, stick with the two rounds, but I'll show you what the three rounds look like. All right. All right, three rounds, mm -hmm. high ready. Yep. Stand by. All right, 1.58. Nice. Three rounds, yep. low ready, stand by. Good. All right. 1.34. Okay, feeling good. So I'm feeling nice and warmed up at this point. And again, these groups are feeling really good. I'm starting to just chew out right into the A. That's precisely what I want on how I am aiming my weapon right there. So we fired what? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen rounds. And I'm feeling pretty warmed up right now. I'm feeling pretty good about what I'm doing and I'm feeling good about my mechanics. I'm feeling good about my follow through. Everything feels good. I'm not pushing it super hard, but I'm pushing it to a point where I'm getting good hits. So that's feeling really good right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick with rifle for right now and I'm gonna walk back and I'm gonna show you some other drills that we can do. Now, here's the thing. I understand I'm shooting outside right now. Depending on where you are and who you're dealing with, you might not be able to shoot outside, you might not have a range outside. That is okay. These drills can be adapted to work indoors. So again, the biggest thing is going to be there is if I'm doing it in the indoors, 
A lot of those indoor facilities don't allow you to go from high ready or low ready, which I think are important positions to work through. <laughs> positions are important but if you're indoors what you can do is you can get your head right off that optic and then on your buzzer bring your head down to your optic and start working that so again it's gonna be about working with what you have because you know if you can't be outside you can't be outside don't get angry about it don't get pissed you can't practice you can certainly practice indoors you're just gonna have to modify what we have right here to make it work better for you so without further ado we're gonna step back here um, the biggest thing is, I think it's really important to start stepping back because we do have a rifle, right? So we've worked up close, we're feeling good about our mechanics, but coming back to around the 50 to 60 yard line is good in my opinion. We're shooting at reduced sized IPSC targets out there and those work really well. So if you don't have those reduced sized IPSC targets, but you do have, let's say, um, paper because you're it you know you're at a indoor range or something like that that can still work you're just going to have to do a little bit more uh, you know movement of that paper back and forth to yourself to make it work but in this case we're lucky we have the steel so we're gonna work that so we're gonna work one of my favorite drills and every guy who's come to my range knows about this drill and that is called the 3-3 drill so the 3-3 drill is so good because what you're working on is going to be follow through and specifically recoil control it is going to be three rounds in under three seconds at varying distances. So we start at a little past 50 and about 60 ish. We go all the way out to 80 to 90 to see if we can get those three rounds in under three seconds. Sometimes it will take you a few tries and this is where we end up burning some of that ammunition. But I think it's one of the more important drills that we end up running because I think it's a really good signifier of your ability to be accurate and be fast at the same time. Now, the time on this 3-3 drill really sinks up on you. It's really important to be nice and consistent, to not freak out, to keep your heart rate low. But in any case, one of my favorite drills. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run it. We got our steel out there at about 60. So we have Sean here, he's gonna be timing me on this. Three rounds, three seconds, 60 yards, first time. All right, so we'll start. There are a couple of different ways you can start it. As you're getting more advanced, you're starting from the low ready, the high ready. To start off with, I would definitely recommend looking over the optic, and then as you get better, start working those drills in, because again, time's fast on this one. Stand by. Mm -hmm. All right, 2.11. Nice, okay. <laughs> I, I, I got you, I got you. <laughs> so we got 2.11 on that. Um, it sneaks up on you quick. Uh, that was a pretty good run for me. I felt really good about that one, but again, um, it's important this drill to be nice and consistent. A lot of people like to get on this and they're like, and they're just missing. They're getting that first impact. But again, at this distance that we're looking at, especially as when we start stepping this back, you're gonna run some problems. So we did it at 60. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna step back to around the 80-ish mark. And we're gonna run the same drill. And again, around the 80, 90 is when we start seeing a lot of failure. That's good, that's what we wanna see. Um, I love this drill. Now, if you are in a indoor range, and you're like, well, shit, I don't have, you know, 80, 90 yards to work with. The most I can work with is, say, 100. Understand. But what you can do is you can reduce the size of your target, right? Makes you aim a little bit smaller. So that can certainly work for you. But in any case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this drill. Sean, are you ready? I'm ready. Do you ready. think I can do ready? this? What's that? Do you think I can do this? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I've never <laughs> seen you do it once. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. Okay. All right. Stand by. Yeah. All right. Oh, four, I got it. Four shots. I did, but I made it. 2.42. You made it. Sweet, sweet victory. Made the cut. So, yeah, and <laughs> cut, and we're good, and we're done. So, the thing about this drill is three rounds to three seconds. Those three rounds have to be impacts. If you need to take a follow-up shot, that is fine, uh, but you need to make sure that you get it within that time frame. Um, of course, the point is, is not, you know, accuracy by volume. So if you're taking like nine shots to get those three impacts, we certainly have a problem. But, you know, four or five shots and still making it, that certainly works. So these are the typical drills um, that I'm running when I'm at my range to keep nice and warm. So it's a good combination of fast up close, working it, and then as we get further out, working those longer shots. And that's gonna keep you uh, fairly nimble, fairly uh, you know, up to speed on what you need to be doing to ensure that you're somewhat lethal with the rifle that you have. So that's what I do with these. But we haven't even talked about pistol yet. 
So let's head back down there. Let's talk a little bit about what we do with pistols to start off with. Often forgotten about, but not talked about a lot, pistols. So it's going to be important to work with your pistol as well as your rifle. Um, we have much the same drills, a little bit less because again, we do have 17 rounds. So we try not to run through a mag when we're running these low round count drills. But if you do, in general, this is what I'm gonna end up doing. Start off with dry fire. Much like I'm running with the rifle, I'm starting at seven yards. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work through just a basic draw to trigger press. I'm gonna do that about three times. Sean, you wanna go ahead and time yeah, me up on this dude? Obviously you won't be able to get a time for me. Oh, yeah, obviously still... make sure your pistol's clear. You don't wanna <laughs> you don't wanna yeet around through a target you don't wanna yeet around through. Alright. Alright. Yep. Stand by. Yep. It's on a three second delay. Okay, feeling good. Okay, one more draw. Hit me. Right. Stand by. Yeah. Okay, feeling pretty good. So my dots lining up pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start doing some little dry fire there. I'm gonna fix this for you yeah. really quick. There you go. So, start off with our nice dry draws. Wasn't even pulling the trigger. I've seen how my dot was ending up for me. If you don't have a dot and you have iron sights, see how those iron sights are lining up. Make sure everything's working well. Feeling good. Start going to a little dry fire. Start with one round, just one shot. All right. All right. Yep. Stand by. Yep. So good. So right there, what we saw is I didn't quite engrage the ALS, right? Good little learning point right there. Okay, let's go again. There we go. Good, one more. Stand by. Yep. Good. Feeling nice and warmed up right now. Keep going. Good. So I'm feeling very smooth. A little bit kind of creaky coming out of there for those first couple draws. So that is why we practice dry fire. And again, um, dry firing, really important. Do it while you're dead in war zone. I know you guys suck at war zone, so make sure that you are doing that type of stuff. But I'm feeling good. What I'm gonna start working here is the reset, just like I would with a rifle. All right. Stand by. Yep. Okay. Work that reset. And then what I'm doing is I'm, again, working through that, right? So I'm keeping that trigger to the rear, cycling the weapon, and I'm quickly resetting that trigger to make sure that my dot isn't doing anything weird. Now, pistols are a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult, right? You're gonna get a little bit more movement when you're working that reset. Again, what's important is when you get that trigger pulled is that that dot is where you need it to be. So, we're feeling pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go hot right here and get into our low round count drills with our pistols. Are you ready, Sean? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Let's get it. So, let's get load up. Oh, you weren't ready. Wasn't ready at all. Ready. All right. Okay. One round. Yeah. Stand by. Good. Give me one more. Yep. Stand by. Good. Feeling good about those. Yeah. Let's take a look right there. So my two draws a shot uh, on that second one, I pulled a little bit to the right. I'm feeling good about that. That feels good. That's a good data point. Again, low round count. We want to make sure that we're being as critical as we can about ourselves. And when I pulled that shot, I could feel it in my finger. So that is good. Let's go ahead and let's work this again. And what we'll do now is because we have far fewer rounds, and we wanna make sure we don't empty that entire mag if at all possible, we're gonna get into our two shot strings. Again, if you can do it, a three shot, but we're gonna do quite a bit less. So, Sean. Right. Two shots, yep. stand by. Good, all right, one more. Good, all right, let's go ahead and check that out. So, on that first two shot string, I felt myself come out on that. Again, that was correction on my support hand. After that, got it corrected. Feeling pretty good about that. So, feeling good about that drill right there. So, as of this point, I have fired six rounds. So, I'm getting close on this mag, getting all closer to halfway through it. So, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna step back. I'm going to step back to my typical position of about 50 to 60. I'm gonna start doing draw to shots and seeing how those feel. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and head back that way. I'm gonna grab a water for myself because it is kind of hot out here right now. But why I like stepping back with the pistol so much is, yes, typically with a pistol, you're at much closer engagement distances. That being said, there have been a lot of individuals throughout history, uh, very recent history, that have made phenomenally long shots in order to stop perpetrators of some sort. So 
I think it's important to understand the ability of your pistol to make longer shots. We're gonna have Sean here, he's gonna time me. So we're going one draw, one shot, trying to make the shot about 60 yards. Uh, this one kind of sucks, but it's a good thing to do. So we're good, we're gonna get into this because we have the C-130 flying overhead. 180, stand by. Okay. So, <laughs> so I had a couple uh, couple misses there. The point is, is that we have that good data point. Right now, I'm working through a bit of a neck injury. Um, so for me, it's a little bit harder to hold the gun steady right now. So these are good data points for me to, as I begin my rehabilitation and get through it. So again, getting those nice 60 yard shots, making sure that you're able to do it, Good. Once you've uh, started to get those good hits, you can set par times for yourself. In this case, I'm typically saying under two seconds, so we can start pushing it. Can I make it to 170? Can I make it to 160? Can I make it to 150? Again, these are goals to set for yourself based on where you are at. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to step back even further. Again, we have a little bit of extra ammo and something that you can do. If you don't have anywhere over 50 to 60 yards to fire, again, smaller targets. So let's go ahead and step back. All right, we're here at 120. Uh, it's a good way to finish it. Again, smaller target if you can't go any further than 50. And uh, we'll give it a shot. A little bit of injury problems, but we'll get through it. All right, stand by. Yep. I think that's a walk off. <laughs> and we're done. So the point is here. 292. Is we, oh, nice. 292? Okay, I'm feeling good about that. So here's the point. We fired less than about 17 rounds. Um, we've gone through some pretty difficult drills. I do consider firing at 60 and 90 from draw, um, keeping under a certain time frame, whether it be three or whatever you determine is hardest for you, to be a difficult thing to do. Combined with everything, we're keeping ourselves pretty proficient. So again, by combining these together with rifle and pistol, this is kind of my go-to to make sure that I'm keeping myself honest. So along with other drills that I'm gonna be putting out and then following videos, use this all combined, space them out and keep yourself somewhat proficient because I know it's difficult right now and we're here to make sure that you guys are staying spicy because that, that is what matters to me. And guys, here's the thing, just like everything we're talking about right now, but training matters. I understand everybody can't go out to a, you know, thousand round course and fire as much as possible, but there are many alternatives. Um, there are plenty of great YouTube channels that give some really good training advice. Um, Travis Haley's course, in fact, right now sells ammo at a discounted price if you go through his course. A little plug for him, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and if you do have the ammunition to do so, courses from Bear Solutions, uh, Cogworks, Pat McNamara, these are great guys who are gonna make you a great shooter. So make sure that you do get some professional training because I really do believe that it will help you. But the biggest thing is if you're not practicing, none of it's going to matter. So make sure that you're getting out there, that you're dry firing and you're practicing, just like I said. Ladies and gentlemen, I care for you guys quite a bit. And that's why we do these videos for you guys, because I love my weird fan base. Guys, stay safe out there. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. Be kind. I know things are crazy right now and that um, it's easy to let your temper flare, but... Um, I've never felt good about getting mad at anything. Um, I've always felt good about being nice to people. And I think there's a lot to be said for it. Now, it doesn't mean that you sit back and you let people uh, take advantage of you or anything like that, but um, a little bit of kindness um, in this society will go a long way. So make sure that you're staying civil and that you're staying nice. Ladies and gentlemen, you know if you've gotten this far, that fun shout out to Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is a repository of survival information Tons of great info out there. Make sure you check it out. Final shout out to my Patreon people. Thank you so much. Love you guys. I've got nothing else for you.